You ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know there's there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps because they, they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado. Free smoke. <laughs> Look. Scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bad talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and godiva I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help popping Coronas And reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for fit And if I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you Doing what it meant to me, but motherfuck all that I don't even offer up the time to make the call back Stupid low though, if they don't get the picture now Man, I crop them out of the photo, I can't relate to my peers Been doing this shit for years, I'm motivated by fears I took the wheel and I steered my sound Not dictated by fuckboys in Atlanta Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss Forever like they decided to throw me under slammer Every song's a hit like they picture me underhand As I could drop a million songs, but they never gon' understand this Soapbox service for niggas Never given chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for this shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, this shit just a life of peril Winning has a price And leadership has a price I'm coming, I promise you, on my life, I'm coming From the first now, man, from the first second What are we gonna do, man? All back against the wall All back is against the wall I'm ready for whatever right now. <laughs> Listen. It started when we were younger, you and my, my boo. Hey, hey, hey. Alicia Keys, boy. <laughs> Woo! Did y'all see Alicia Keys, bro? What What did uh, Meg Thee Stallion or Cardi saying that? What'd they say? I need you to back that big dump truck in front of this little garage. Something, whatever the fuck they say. That's what I was thinking when I was looking at Keisha. I'm Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole fine as hell, too. And when I was looking at Alicia Keys and all that, in that red October tight fit. Anytime I see somebody wearing all red, I think to myself, red October. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. Uh, The Super Bowl. The Super Bowl has came. It has went. Meaning that is the end of yet another NFL season. Back to back Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Mahomes. Yo, first off, shout out to everybody involved with the Chiefs. I want to praise a, a lot of different people before I, it's going to be a, a, a lengthy episode. I want to praise a couple Chiefs before we get into the episode because it's a great chance that I could forget about them while praising Pat Mahomes. So, shout out to Steve Spagnola unbelievable defensive mind like his fourth Super Bowl I think his third with the uh, Chiefs his defense done been phenomenal throughout this entire playoff run I done told you I done praised Spagnola's defense on the show every year I've been on the show basically especially in the playoffs I tell you how great they play in the playoffs another magnificent performance by his defense Shout out to Andy Reid, even though I do not believe that Andy Reid's play calling was like next world in this playoff series or in this season, to be honest with you. I think Andy Reid benefited from having Pat Mahomes this year. This is like one of the few years that I could look at Andy Reid's play calling and say, yeah, this play calling is not a game change. It's not game changing. It's Pat Mahomes. But shout out to Andy Reid for being a phenomenal head coach. Shout out to, um, 
Isaiah Pacheco for the good year, the offensive line. Chris Jones made himself a stupid amount of bread in the uh, Super Bowl. Uh, he about to take the Tyreek Hill route and finally go get paid. So shout out to him. We remember how the season started for him, not wanting to play, holding out. And now he's going to finish the season in his Chiefs career with a Super Bowl, more than likely. He'll come back and retire as a Chief one day. But shout out to Chris Jones. I believe he's a Hall of Famer. But he definitely about to make that Hall of Fame case even stronger over the next couple of years because I don't think the Chiefs are going to pay him what he is worth. And I would not <clears throat> blame the Chiefs for that because, to me, you got to go get Pat Mahomes some help, bro. You have to go get Pat Mahomes some help. But shout out to everybody involved with the Chiefs. Shout out to Taylor Swift for dating Travis Kelsey at the most opportune time. Shout out to... uh fuck what's this man's name whoever the owner of the chiefs is and they gm i can't remember their names at the moment uh but shout out to all of them uh for putting together such a great not necessarily putting together a great team as much as being smart enough to draft pat mahomes um what else what else shout out to uh jason kelsey for his support of his brother uh, and that's about everybody for the Chiefs that I'm going to shout out right now. But we are back with another episode of Kicking It With Saint. I appreciate you for being here. The Super Bowl edition. We just got done watching the Super Bowl. I was on Twitter throughout this entire game. I didn't know if I was going to do that or not. I didn't know if I was going to be uh, on Twitter throughout the game. But I said, I'm, I'm going to get on Twitter just to... I'm, I'm going to tweet and, and check out the tweets throughout the uh, game. However, boy... Twitter is a place. Damn near nobody. I, I guess I just don't have any Chiefs fans that follow me or I don't follow any Chiefs fans because everybody on my timeline wanted the uh, 49ers to win. And you know what I'm starting to realize, bro? Sports fans make no sense. Well, I'm not starting to realize that. I've been realized that. How I understand we 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 left the Tom Brady dynasty and immediately entered into the Pat Mahomes dynasty. I get it. I get it. I understand people don't like that. However, if you are a fan of greatness, I don't know how you don't like Pat Mahomes. On top of that, if your team religiously loses to Pat Mahomes, you should want that motherfucker to win even more because now you have an excuse. Now you can say, well, we keep losing to the motherfuckers that keep winning the Super Bowl. Like, I don't understand the Pat Mahomes hate at this point. I think he the GOAT. I would take him over any quarterback that has ever played this game. <clears throat> I don't think it's a player who I would take before I took Pat Mahomes in a draft. Like, I understand how great Tom Brady is. Tom Brady is not Patrick Mahomes, bro. I do not care about them seven Super Bowls. I do care about them. I apologize for even saying that. That was blasphemy. However... I know what my eyes are seeing, bro. Pat Mahomes is the greatest player to ever play this fucking game. If you give Brady the same talent that Pat Mahomes don't want a Super Bowl with back to back, I don't know if Brady win one of them things. I just don't know. Because Brady is basically, I mean, Pat Mahomes is basically playing with the equivalent of what Brady left his last year in uh, New England. Hand me down weapons, you know. Dudes out of their proms. Dudes on the last legs of their career. Young guys. That's what Mahomes playing with. And he just won two Super Bowls. Not to mention, the motherfucker just had to take out Lamar Jackson. Josh uh, Allen. He done took out Joe Burrow before. He done had to take out a Brady before. Like, bro, look at the hit roller. He, this man is 12 and 3. Nah, what, what? Now this Super Bowl... I think we, uh, if they put that record up on the screen and it was involving all his playoff wins, including the Super Bowl, he 12 and three in the playoffs. And now I think that's 13 and three because he just won another Super Bowl. This dude makes no sense. <clears throat> I've been saying it all season, especially as the playoffs came around. The dude is unreal. Pat Mahomes, listen, I understand hating Pat, uh, well, I don't understand it, but if you, like, I get a lot of people don't like Chief, don't like Chiefs fans at this very moment. Um, I don't like Nick Wright because I think he obnoxious. I don't think he know ball. He just got the best quarterback in football playing for his team. 
So when that happens, it's easy to be a great analyst when you only have to talk about your football team. But I don't uh, – and some of the things he say is true. Like Pat Mahomes has no equal. I agree with that. He has no equal. Pat Mahomes, I always say him and Lamar, to me, is the most talented quarterbacks in football. And I think those – like I wouldn't take any other quarterback in football over those two. But understand when I say that, Mahomes is still levels above Lamar Jackson. It's not close. Like, Lamar is closer, Josh Allen is closer to Lamar than Lamar is to Pat Mahomes. Now, I understand people are going to say, well, Saint, a Super Bowl is a team award. Go look at Pat Mahomes and all three of his Super Bowl wins. You can pinpoint the big plays he made in every single one of those games. And this is my problem with, with some of the commentary I saw tonight. I'm seeing people just go crazy for Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy did not have a good game just now. He had an aight game, I guess, <clears throat> an average game. He didn't do shit special in this game. He throwing dump offs and screens and and uh, quick passes, dinking and dunking, slant passes. The dudes making big plays after the catch, and we praising Brock Purdy. And I have no problem with dudes making plays after the catch. But understanding the difference between my skill position making big plays and my quarterback making big plays is completely different. I don't know how Tony Romo ended up getting this fucking game, but please, God, don't ever let Tony Romo host. I mean, uh, be commentating on another Super Bowl, bro. I almost turned the volume down. I'm not going to lie to you. I do not like listening to uh, Tony Romo. I don't watch too many games when he have to do a Ravens game. Bro, he done did a Ravens game, I believe, that had Tyler Huntley in it. Boy, if you heard how he kept boosting up Tyler Huntley, bro. I think he was one of the analysts who said he basically played like Lamar Jackson. I was like, man, see, that's so racist. But I, I don't like listening to Tony Romo. Jim Nance, I don't know if I got a problem with him. I can't even remember who his old partner used to be. Uh, But I know I don't fucking like Tony Romo. Now, some people might have been like, well, Saint, who would you have liked to hear in a Super Bowl? Chris Collinsworth and um, Mike Tirico. That's who I wanted to hear call the Super Bowl. Or Greg Olson and his uh, partner. I know Greg called the Super Bowl last year. Who I don't want to hear is big mouth ass Tony Romo, who never played in a Super Bowl, bro. I think the furthest Tony Romo done got is the divisional. The Listen to how he be calling these games sometimes, like he done been in these positions to be great. Bro, shut the fuck up, bro. Just call the game. We don't need all your insights and how smart you think you is. Bro, you are not a Hall of Fame quarterback, bro. Like, I be hearing Pat Mahomes say, this is what Pat Mahomes need to do. Pat Mahomes got three rings, brother. How about you shut the fuck up and watch him work? No shade, though. But, oh, man, what a, what a night. What a night, you know? A lot of people on my timeline was... Picking the 49ers. I don't know why. I don't know why. And this is my thing with the 49ers. Fans was picking the 49ers because they didn't like Pat Mahomes. But let me ask you this. After this game, if the 49ers win, you would have been pissed if they started telling you how great Brock Purdy was. After this game, nobody is saying anything about Pat Mahomes' greatness because we all understand what Pat Mahomes is. You did not want... The 49ers to win that game. All right. Let me talk to moronic ass Bengal fans right now. Because I got a lot of them on my timeline somehow. A lot of Bengal fans. For one matter of fact, before I even get into the Bengal fans, I keep seeing this common tweet going around because the NFL awards happened randomly. I thought that shit happens the day before the Super Bowl. I think that shit happened like on a Thursday or something like that. Um, I saw a lot of Bengal fans tweeting like, oh, Lamar Jackson got two Super Bowls. But he no, and then I saw people say we can find on on uh the what is this show speak. They was like we can finally start mentioning Lamar in the same conversation as Joe Burrow and uh and Josh Allen. What, bro? If you take those three quarterbacks' resumes right now, only one of them motherfuckers is entering the Hall of Fame right now. Josh Allen and Joe Burrow are not Hall of Famers. I know we love these white quarterbacks. And because they throw good, I mean, people done already basically put Justin Herbert in the Hall of Fame. So I understand there's a lot of people who done basically already put Joe Burrow and Josh Allen into the Hall of Fame. They do not have Hall of Fame resumes right now. 
Lamar Jackson does. So as much as y'all like trying to point out old playoff wins and RG3 been loud and wrong the last couple of days about Lamar Jackson two and four in the playoffs. He's three and four in the playoffs. I don't know why we keep bringing these records up because we don't bring them up for no other quarterback. These records in the playoffs do not matter, in my opinion, unless you just got a quarterback who just don't never win in the playoffs. And then you also have to take into context the motherfucker that had two different years where he didn't even play a first, a wild card game because his team didn't have to. So the, the playoff record shit don't really mean much to me. Pat Mahomes do because that motherfucker is an insane player on a different type of level. But a reminder to Josh Allen and Joe Burrow fans, bro, you would take Lamar Jackson's resume if if you could flip Lamar's resume with Joe Burrow's or Josh Allen's, you would in a hot second, bro. So this hate that y'all have for Lamar Jackson, y'all got to let it go. I just really wish fans would just enjoy the game, bro. Being a fan of a team does not mean you have to hate other players, bro. It don't. It's no way you would take Josh Allen's current resume or Joe Burrow's over Lamar. It's just no way. Because you get into the Hall of Fame on individual achievements and team achievements. Lamar Jackson's resume is just better. I mean, the motherfucker got two first-team All-Pros and two MVPs, one unanimous. Bro, the only quarterback that has a resume better than Lamar's right now that's playing out of the young quarterbacks is Mahomes. Coincidentally, he is the GOAT. So I just really wish Bengal fans, Bill fans, and fans of all these other teams would calm down, bro. Y'all hating on players for no reason whatsoever. No reason whatsoever. Now, to the Bengal fans, specifically the Bengal fans, you guys are a bunch of morons. I done seen so many Bengal fans wish that Purdy, I mean the 49ers will win this game. But by the logic that they continue to spew, Mind you, the logic from Bengal fans make no sense. They call Lamar injury prone, Josh Allen, I mean, Joe Burrow done missed two seasons. They say Lamar chokes in the playoffs, Joe Burrow done lost the Super Bowl to a team he should have beat. And if you're being honest, he should have beat Pat Mahomes in that second playoff game. He played against him too, and they lost that. So uh, both of those things then came back to bite Bengal fans in the ass because you should be worried about your own team and not everything else. But the biggest thing that I'm having with the, the my biggest problem or my concern for, you know, fans like to throw around CTE, CTE. I'm starting to think Bengal fans got CTE from years of uh, emotional damage by the team because you keep telling me how bad Pat Mahomes is. Oh, I don't want him to win. Oh, he ain't really that good. If Brock Purdy won this game, by the logic of a Bengal fan, Purdy's better than uh, Joe Burrow. And if we start to utter that, Bengal fans will lose their fucking minds. Mind you, I just want to point out Joe Burrow. This is this is what be irritating me about white quarterbacks sometimes. Joe Burrow always want to be politically correct. And I fuck with Joe, but I don't like that politically correct shit. And you really only ever see that with white quarterbacks. Most quarterbacks don't try to be political. Oh, and Russell Wilson, but Russell Wilson is just Russell Wilson. People keep hating on him. I don't know why, but he is what he is. Joe, they asked Joe Burrow, did they think uh, Buddy is a system quarterback? And he's like, well, you got to be a system. You better be a game manager to uh, be a good quarterback in this league. Like, bro, shut the fuck up and answer the question. They, you know what they should have asked? Do you think Brock Purdy is on your level, bro? Because I'm sick of these politically correct answers and shit like that that the white quarterbacks give sometimes so that people can boost and brag about. Like, every time Joe Burrow, when he was hurt, he was on oh, look at Joe Burrow. Like, bro. And it's not Joe Burrow. It's the white fans. But when Joe Burrow do this, because it was something else Joe Burrow did a couple years back when he started. Like, bro, Joe Burrow just know how to rock with the media, bro. He know how to uh how to get the media to cocksuck him, bro. And I don't like that, bro. I don't like it. All right? I'm just keeping it a buck with you. I don't like it. Some dudes got to actually go out there and just be great, like my homes. Some dudes got to just go out there and be overcome every obstacle to throw at them, like Lamar uh, or Allen. They can't just say politically correct shit all the time and never mean it. Because do you really think Joe Burrow would put Brock Purdy on his level? No. But when he's sitting in front of the cameras, he got no problem saying it. But y'all get mad when Cam Newton say that that's a game manager. What did he look like tonight in the Super Bowl? 
What did he look like in a couple of these playoff games that y'all tried to overhype him in and he could have lost every single fucking one of them? It's real funny what happened when he went up against that dude. But I'm not putting this on Brock Purdy. It's on Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. But shout out to the... Hey. <coughs> I'm still very much sick. Still battling through it. But we are here. Listen. It was a great night. I, I stopped watching halftime shows, but then I started watching them back like probably couple years back I, I can't remember the last one that i uh i can't remember the halftime show that made me start watching halftime shows again but usher Ar- Ar- usher what a what a performance he left a lot of bangers on the floor that he could have performed but the talk around town right now is alicia keys and started when we were younger you and i my boo hey Alicia Keys was looking like a whole snack, bro. I'm trying to listen. The Swish beat memes is is out in full effect. I saw somebody tweet Kiki Palmer's husband sitting uh husband sitting around like, see? Because Usher gave uh Alicia Keys that hug. Alicia Keys smiled hit that hug from the back. Alicia Keys smiled like, damn, Swish ain't hugged me like this in 10 years. Hey, Swiss, you better put down that pipe tonight, my guy. I'm talking about as soon as she walk in the house, straight fucking. Because if you don't, you're going to have her laying in bed one night thinking to herself like, man, Usher did hug me from the back and I felt a little bump in the trunk. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Swiss. I'm saying. Listen, you might not even hear this message, but it's going to get to you if you get on the Internet. Trust me. You go see other people talk about it. I'm just saying you need to handle your business. But I would like to say this. You know, I be hearing a lot of people say, you know, the way you start your relationship is how it's going to end and all this uh, dumb philosophical uh, dumb shit that people be saying. One of them motherfuckers cheated on their spouse and ended up with each other with Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats. I can't remember if it was Swiss cheating on his. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They was calling Alicia Keys a home wrecker back in the day because Swiss was married and they was cheating with each other. Listen, that's not my business. But all I'm saying is it's funny how this thing works out. But listen. Swish, your girl just happened to run into the ultimate homewrecker. And Usher, baby. That, hey, Usher don't respect nobody's relationship, I see, bro. Imagine your wife, Usher hugging your wife from the back like that, and she smiled like that afterwards. Bro! I'm fucking so- Get the gun. It's, we got to go to war with him. We got to. We got to. But let's talk about some other things that happened throughout the Super Bowl. You had the Super Bowl commercials. I be hating when I hear people say, I don't even watch Super Bowl. I just watch the halftime of the commercials. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. But let's talk about some of the commercials. We got uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I will never watch those movies. I don't like Planet of the Apes. And I'm going to keep my opinions on those movies to myself right at the, at the moment because it's not going to be a Planet of the Apes show. Uh I'm not really a Deadpool guy. I know that's the hype thing on the internet, but I'm a Wolverine guy. And I'm a Hugh Jackman Wolverine guy, so I will watch that movie. I'm not going to the movie theater to see it, but I will. Well, I might. It depends on who I go with. but Because I already know I'm going to be invited to the movies to go watch that with multiple people. Brothers, women, family members. I know a lot of people are going to invite me to the movies to go see that. Uh, Wolverine versus Deadpool or Deadpool and Wolverine, whatever it's called. And I'm probably going to go see it uh, because I fuck with Wolverine heavy. I'm not really a Marvel guy, you know, and Deadpool. I know a lot of people love Deadpool. I really think Deadpool is a white man superhero, bro. Like, I don't really care about the antics. I notice it's a lot of things where you be like, Look at everything he do. That's funny. Yeah, white people find that amusing. And I'm not telling you that no black person enjoy that. But the overwhelming crowd. Yeah, that's a white people thing. But Deadpool is cool. I, I didn't enjoy neither of the first two movies by Deadpool because the humor wasn't really for me. It was scenes throughout the movie that I enjoyed. And I'm not telling you that I don't enjoy white humor. I do enjoy the white humor at times. Not even at times. I enjoy it when it's done right. Deadpool to me is... I don't know. Deadpool ain't never really done much for me. Um, I know everybody loved Ryan Reynolds, 
I'm not really a big Ryan Reynolds guy. I respect his dedication to the character of Deadpool. Deadpool is really just Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds. I mean, I can't really name, you know, Ryan Reynolds movie that I think is just a tier. But if you love Ryan Reynolds, you love Deadpool. That's cool. I'm going to watch the movie because of Wolverine, not because of Deadpool or because of Ryan Reynolds. But, you know, we saw a commercial for Duncan. It felt like Tom Brady was in every other commercial. He was in that commercial with Vince Vaughn. He was in that. I cannot believe I remember that man's name. He was in Dodgeball. That's why I remember his name. If you could dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Nigga socked him like whoop. Like, bro, you stood there and let him clock you with that wrench, brother. First off, what the fuck kind of coach will throw a wrench at you? That's some good coaching, though. I, I'm going to be honest with you. If you got a coach that's throwing fucking wrenches at you, you dodging them some bitches, bro. But imagine a wrench coming in at you at like 40 miles per hour, bro. That's tough, bro. Because everybody's feet get stuck in the dirt at times, bro. Could you imagine getting concussed by a fucking wrench, bro? I take that back. I don't think that's great coaching, bro. That's just... that's. That's kind of manic. I ain't going to lie, but it was a great movie nonetheless. Um, With Ben Stiller and uh, Vince Vaughn. Nonetheless, MGM grand commercial. Uh, Betting commercials don't do much for me because I don't gamble. I don't bet on games. If I did, it was no, it's no shot that I could get on here and give you my honest opinions and unbiased opinions. Um, motherfuckers betting on America has a problem. Gamble, y'all really got gambling problems, bro. I see motherfuckers gambling on the national anthem. If Usher was gonna take his shirt off, the coin toss. I thought it was madness when people was betting on a coin toss. So you would, you be willing to lose a bunch of money on a coin toss? Y'all need to call that helpline, bro. Dead ass, bro. They be saying that if you gotta chase your uh, losses, then you should call the line. Nah, buddy. If it's certain gambles that you're willing to make and you don't have a following, like you making these gambles because you got, like I understand Pat McAfee betting on the kickoff and betting on the coin toss. He got a whole fucking uh, community following him and he give away the money anyways when he win it. You sitting at your crib thinking that you got the bread to just waste on a coin toss is crazy. That's crazy to me. Like that's insane. I'm going to tell y'all something else that's really been irritating me in the last couple of days. And we wasn't talking about things that irritate me, but I do want to say something. This over uh, flux of, I don't know, maybe I'm treating these dudes like people treat athletes, but streamers really irritate me. Um, now, people not going to like this. <laughs> but I just think streamers are out of connect with most of the world, bro. And maybe they act like that because they got so many young kids that follow them. So they got to act a certain type of way. But streamers, bro, I really be sometimes I be seeing them tweeting on my shit. And I be like, man, I wish this dude to shut the fuck up. Like, I know you tweeting this shit for your fault. Like, y'all know who Tim the Tap Man is? Sometimes I'll see Tim the Tap Man tweeting this shit throughout the season. I'm like, man, I wish this dude to shut the fuck up. But I know he only tweeting this because of the engagement and shit like that because of his community. So I know I'll be having to chill. I'll be like. All right, bro, just let the man live, bro. Now, mind you, I ain't never... You really got to irritate me for me to actually tweet under your tweet, like, yo, shut the fuck up. I do that to Ryan Clark all the time. And I don't even dislike Ryan Clark. I just think he tweet a lot of stupid shit. And he try to make everything deeper than it's got to be. And I'm not a motherfucker who afraid to make something deeper because it's supposed to be taken to another level. However, Ryan Clark, bro, like they was having a conversation on the top five light skinned dudes who carry in the light skinned brothers. And he wanted to turn that into a thing of, yeah, we be hating on our own races. No, bro. They just having a fun conversation. I understand the conversation you having, but that is not what they was doing right now. They wasn't putting down other uh, tones of black to uplift light skin. Like, that's not what was happening. But we're not here to have a Ryan Clark show either. Uh, what other commercials did we see? Beyonce. Beyonce had a Verizon commercial uh, or Verizon had a Beyonce commercial, however you want to word it. Beyonce fine as hell, bro. I don't know. I don't understand the people who who be saying Beyonce ugly and this. Now, I got a dude who I work with. He hate Beyonce, bro. He couldn't give you no real legitimate concrete evidence, concrete proof as to why he hate Beyonce. He couldn't tell you exactly why he believed what he believed that she into witchcraft and all this type of weird shit that he be saying. 
I find it very funny that broke people had a time to sit around and think about shit like that. Like I was on Twitter the other day and I was seeing how people like tweet about celebrities and shit, how they go to bat for celebrities that they ain't never met, that the celebrity is not losing this type of sleep over you. But people be arguing with other people they don't know about celebrities they ain't never met and spent a day with, bro. And that is so wild to me. Like if somebody tweeted me, Lamar Jackson don't get bitches. And I started tweeting him, bro, you don't know how many bitches he get, bro. He get a whole bunch of like, what? Bro, to me, that's just weird. I think anytime people rocking like that for celebrities is weird. Like I be seeing people get online and say, oh yeah, I, uh, who, Nikki couldn't never, uh, have it with none of these females. Like bro, y'all are weirdos, bro. Y'all need help. Like seek help, bro counseling god church whatever you believe in whatever is your you need help bro the way y'all be tweeting about these celebrities and be defending celebrities that won't that for one don't need defending two celebrities is not losing this type of sleep not losing no sleep over y'all bro so the way that y'all be defending some of this shit it, it, it be stuff that don't matter like somebody he say she say type shit to child like bro y'all don't even and i told y'all when i see people Talk about situations as if they were there. Like people still bring up that Tory Lanez, uh, Meg the Stallion shit. Like they was sitting in the car with the motherfuckers. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up, bruh. It's, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. But what, what else did we see in the Super Bowl tonight, bro? It was a great night of football, bro. Let's see. Because we're going to get to the game, obviously. We're going to get to the game even more. This is a long show tonight. we got to touch everything. We're touching everything that happened on this beautiful Sunday, on this beautiful Super Bowl Sunday. My sister made spaghetti. Fuck Domino's. Ooh, fuck Domino's, bro. Domino's, y'all can give me them free emergency pizzas, and I'm not even going to use them at this point, bro. Fuck y'all, bro. I am so serious, bro. How y'all nigga? How y'all going to message me three days ago to try to fix the solution? And I haven't heard back from y'all yet, bro. Y'all didn't want to give me them pizzas for the Super Bowl. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. If you message me tomorrow on Monday, I'm going to respond. Suck my dick. I'm I'm just saying it right now. Respond to me tomorrow, and I'm going to say, suck my dick. Go die slow. And I don't mean that message, the second half of it. And if you're a dude, I'm not, I don't mean the first half of it. If you're a female, I don't mean the first half of it either. I I don't force people to do things sexually. Bro, a crazy conversation was going on on Twitter, bro. Somebody was like, murder is not the worst crime you commit. Sexual crimes is. And then I didn't even let my head get wrapped around it because sexual crimes, murdering people, all of it is bad. I understand you could justify murder by saying somebody was attacking me. They had, bro, whatever, bro. To me, both of them is terrible crimes. I'm not trying to put them on a scale on which one smelled the worst, bro. I hate it when people like to compare which shit stank the worst, bro. They both stank. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's a weird reality when we sit around thinking to ourselves, hmm, which one is worse? Murdering people or sexual crimes? Like, bro, are we serious? If it's a crime, it's a crime. Now, I understand a low-level crime like robbing somebody. Nope, nope. I can't even say that. Running a red light. Now, that's something I would try to say. Oh, well, you know, you can't really compare. But comparing all these high level murders, I mean, high level crimes. Why does it matter, bro? They both stink. But a dude tweeted under that and was like, so you telling me if a dude raped me, if I get raped and in quotations, he said by a man, then it's not justified for me to rape him back. (laughs) I said, yo, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. What the fuck? Where have we went? This this just went somewhere quick. Like, and somebody tweeted him and was like, how the fuck did you even think of something like that? And you want to know what's crazy? I'm almost certain it was a black dude who tweeted that because of the how he worded it. White people don't tweet like that. And white people who be pretending they black don't tweet like that either. That was an authentic black man. <laughs> that it, matter of fact, it wasn't even an authentic black man. That was an authentic black kid. So I don't know. He had to be in high school, middle school. 
who knows what he going to turn into? Because we got a lot of uh, ridiculous black kids right now who don't carry the culture at all. They absolutely dreadful. They the same kids that walk around talking about some. I let anybody say the N word. I don't really care. It's just a disgrace to your culture, little homie. But what else happened in this Super Bowl? Let's talk about it. Her, her rock that guitar, bro. Her, capital H dot E dot R. Her. She the one in the song with uh, Corday. I'm on this road and I'm not sure where my heart is headed. And if you leave me now, I know I far regret it. Told you why, told you twice that I'm indebted. But I can't trust no time. But I can't waste no time. You know my time is precious. Uh, he was in. She was in that song with him. Bro, Corday got the bro Corday's song. Um, Dream and Color. Oh my God, that shit is hard. But I dream in color. And I sleep on the canvas. I think we all need each other. Empathy, that could be our advantage. Bad bitch speak Creole in Spanish. She looked this way, and I'm liking my chances. Oh, man, why I go on these tangents? Shit so hard, man, this shit panoramic. Still tripping off my paranoia. Yo, that shit is hard, bro. That's probably one of my favorite songs. Corday's Dream and Color. The beat, bro. Boo. Boo. Doo. Doo. Do. Bro, y'all gotta go listen to that shit, bro. If you don't do nothing, go listen to Corday Dream in Color, bro. That shit is so hard, bro. And after you listen to that, if you still don't know who her is, then go listen to Corday's um what is it? Chronicles. And that's got her. It's got her and it's got uh What's my man's name, bro? Um They scared to come outside. Who 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 was that motherfucker? Uh, I don't know how I forgot my man's name, bro. And I know why, cause they die off show. What is this motherfucker's name? The Chicago motherfucker, man. How did I forget this dude's name? I listened to the dude and I can't remember his name at the moment. Hold up, we finna just look it up. <laughs> but it's Core Dave, uh, and it's called Chronicles, and it's featuring um her. I really want to, I really, I, Drewski, for some reason, keep popping up in my head. It's not Drewski. I don't know how I forgot this man's name. I keep clicking on C on this YouTube shit, and it keep popping in a J. For some reason, this is delay on the, um, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I'm looking at this man's face, and I still don't remember his fucking name, man. Lil Dirk. I don't even call the motherfucker Lil Dirk. I just call him Dirk. That's what that was what was fucking me up. Uh Dirk, her, and Corday. It's called Chronicles. I love that song too, but Dreaming Color is like Dreaming Color might be on my top ten songs all time. I'm not sure yet. Cause my top ten songs all time get kind of convoluted at times. <laughs> Cause I take shit out, I throw shit in. It depends on how I'm feeling that day. But what else did we have in this super bro? Alicia Keys look like a whole fucking snack, bro. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Alicia Keys fine as hell. It don't make no fucking sense, bro. It don't make sense that a woman looked that damn good, bro. I know people was trying to clown her because of her uh, how she hit that first note, bro. Y'all can go suck a dick, bro. Y'all don't 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 talk about Alicia Keys crazy, bro. Do not, bro. Don't speak ill of Alicia Keys in my presence, bro. Okay. I done loved Alicia Keys my whole life. What's that song? That woman's work, bro. That's Cause I'm here, hey, no, I'm here, hey, when it sees her, and I'm here, hey, no, I'm here, hey. That shit is hard, boy, that shit is hard, boy, Alicia Keys got bangers, bro. Usher got bangers, too, like I said, he left a lot of things on the floor. You knew he was gonna perform, uh, White Boy Anthem. You knew he was gonna, yeah, see, okay, so I'll click on the A. And I'll move to the next letter and it won't log the A in quick enough. So it'll start typing in the other letter that I landed on. Bro, I fucking, I need to buy a new Xbox. That's really what the problem is. But nonetheless, and I'm only using this Xbox lookup shit because my laptop's broke. Um, however, plus usually the Xbox is more convenient to look straight up with when I'm recording. But Alicia Keys. She got bangers too, bro. She got bangers too. I knew she was, I knew they was gonna perform, uh, my boo. But you got, if I ain't got you, baby, if I ain't got, 
Some people want diamond rings. Yo. But I don't. That's my shit, bro. Y'all, y'all notice how I'm fucking up the lyrics on some of these shits? I was mumbling that last shit, bro. Because it's here. As long as you know the beat, bro, you can do that, bro. You don't even got to say the words, bro. You can just. Now, if I hear this song again, I'm going to know all the words. But off the top of my head right now, bro, I, I got so much music in my head, bro. It's impossible. Oh, then you got that. No. I... They need to let Alicia Keys do the Super Bowl halftime show now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I want to hear her perform. You got no one. You got unthinkable. You got falling. I keep on falling. Oh my god. You got the you don't know my name. You got this girl is on you got girl on fight. You got every time you hold me. Hold me like this is your last time. That's my shit too. I ain't gonna lie. That's my shit. You got try sleeping with a broken heart, bro. Cause of him. I think a woman's worth is probably one of my favorite Alicia Keys songs of all time, bro. That shit is just super hard, bro. And she had the red piano just dripped out. Now, uh, "Lift Every Voice and Sing," the Black National Anthem, was performed by Andrea Day. Uh, Post Malone sang "America the Beautiful." Reba McIntyre sang the national anthem. You have to know that I'm looking at that on my screen. It's no fucking shot. I would have remembered that all off the top of my head. I didn't even plan on mentioning none of that. But I just want to say something. Because I did not know Post Malone had performed. Uh, I didn't watch. Um, I chose not to watch the beginning of the Super Bowl. Uh, those parts where they doing the national anthem and all that shit. When I, watch, when I turned on the Super Bowl, it was the first drop. Chris McCaffrey fumbled on that. But. That's when I started watching the Super Bowl on the first drive of the actual game. I, I be getting through all that extra shit that happened before games, bro. I don't listen to the national anthem be performed. Somebody gonna be like, oh, he hates America. I don't listen to the national anthem performed. I done soured on the national anthem after I saw how white people treated black people for taking a knee. I'm never gonna probably listen to a national anthem be sang again, uh, personally. That's just how I feel about it because I can't understand the vitriol that white people had in the, uh, or against black people when black people said, bro, the national anthem does not mean what y'all say it's supposed to mean. Black people is being murdered in the streets by cops and y'all think that's okay. And white people hated black people for that. They turned it into a political thing and it was never that. They said, oh, they hate America. They hate the flag. It's got nothing to do with that. So that turned me sour on the national anthem. So I just don't listen to that shit before games anymore. Somebody gonna be mad. They're gonna like, oh, he called it shit. Whatever you want to do, baby, go ahead and do it. But I don't listen to that shit, so I, I, I'm not going to address Reba McIntyre's National Anthem. I'm pretty sure she did a great job. I want to talk about Post Malone for a quick second because I tweeted during this game. I said, yo, Alicia Keys fine as hell. But then I tweeted and I said, yo, people who keep saying that they will fuck Pat, uh, Post Malone and they think Post Malone is attractive, it's only white women who chain smoke cigarettes, bro. And smoke cigarettes in the crib, bro. Because how do you find Post Malone attractive, bro? How? Dude look like a fucking... Bro. Do y'all be seeing how he... Bro, he be chain smoking cigarettes and drinking Bud Lights, bro. And y'all find that shit attractive because he can make some catchy tracks. And I like Post Malone's music. His song with you Said, I die for you, I die for you, I die for you. But you lied to me, you lied to me. Post Malone got his... You get left in the dark. And as I start fire, you're a sunflower. I think my love will be too much. Like, the motherfucker got hits, bro. I'm not denying that. White Iverson's trash, uh, which was the first song I heard by Post. So it took me about a year to actually start listening to Post Malone because I hated White Iverson. But I don't know how he sang America the Beautiful. I could care less about that. But people who keep tweeting that they find him attractive worry me. Because what is attractive about somebody who be chain smoking cigarettes and always look like he drunk or high off of beers, bro? Like, I don't I don't get it, man. This dude gotta had a worse breath. I'm I wanna know what Post Malone smell like now. I would like to sit beside him just to understand his aura and what his smell is. Because right now in my mind, he smell like a pack of Newports 
or a pack of camels in a Bud Light. Because every time I see him, that's what he got on. I mean, I say he got on like it's some clothes, but I mean, that's basically his whole aura. Cigarettes and beers. Like real trailer park trash type shit. Now, some white person gonna be like, oh, that's hella racist. If I had said somebody was real niggerish with uh, <laughs> living in the hood in the ghettos, y'all do that shit anyways. <laughs> also, I do want to send a shout out to all of the people who listen to me that are white. You're the real MVPs, man. Do you know how great of a white person you got to be to be able to sit here and listen to me talk on these shows all the time? You got to, for one, you don't have to have thick skin. You just have to have, be a good human being to understand I'm not talking about every white person when I say the shit that I be saying. But listen to me. What else happened on this phenomenal Super Bowl night, baby? Okay, so Pacheco and Christian McCaffrey both fumbled in this game. I bet you nobody could have guessed that was gonna happen. Uh, what 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 else we gonna uh? I'm trying to make sure we address everything before we get out of the game. Oh, a couple dudes left this game because, bruh, Greenlaw tore his Achilles. I believe running back onto the field, bro. He was jumping up and down on the sideline, warming himself up. And as he was sprinting to get back on the field, immediately popped his. And I knew it was a popped Achilles when I saw it too. I said, oh, that's definitely the key. Somebody tweeted it's a hamstring. I hope so. Because if, if it's an Achilles, he probably missing all next year. It's a good chance he missed the entirety of next year. Now let's get to the games. Kyle Shanahan loses yet another fucking Super Bowl to Patrick fucking Mahomes. See, this is why I keep telling Raven fans, bro. Y'all sad we lost in the AFC Championship game. You got Josh Allen fans mad uh, because they keep losing to Pat Mahomes. Try to beat Kyle Shanahan. That motherfucker done lost to Pat Mahomes in the two Super Bowls, and he was leading in both of them and lost both of them. Because Pat Mahomes just made play after play. Bro, it really is crazy when you think about everything that happened throughout a game. To allow the door to be left open for Pat Mahomes to be Pat Mahomes, that's your fault. Now, a lot of things will be said about this game. In this, uh, It was a slow start to the game. A lot of defense being played. I think the score was 10-3 going into the uh, halftime. In my opinion. The biggest prop, the reason that the 49ers lost this game was because of Kyle Shanahan. I can go to every single Kyle Shanahan Super Bowl where he done coached in as a head coach or coached in as a uh, offensive coordinator and point in every single one of those games. I can say to you, look, what is, what, what is going on with Kyle Shanahan right now? What is this play calling? What is happening right now? You can do that in every single one of his losses in the Super Bowl, and it didn't change tonight. It was a good portion, this third quarter specifically, where Kyle Shanahan basically forgot how to coach a fucking football game. And this thing, and see, I knew this was going to happen at some point in time. I just didn't think Kyle Shanahan would be stupid to allow it to happen in a Super Bowl where he want to prove that Brock Purdy got us here. Brock Purdy is better than what people say he is. He not just a game manager. He a top elite quarterback. I knew that Kyle Shanahan would try to make that point, but I didn't know he would try to make that point throughout the duration of the game. I thought he'd give him a drive or two. But I thought he would stick with what we know got him there, running the ball with C-Mac. That is not what he decided to do in the third quarter. He decided to continue to let Brock Purdy drop back and throw the football. And I don't understand that at all. Especially, especially when your defense is doing what they have done to start this game. Bro, Pat Mahomes went like 15, 16 uh, drives without throwing a fucking touchdown. The Chiefs couldn't move the ball damn near uh, for a good portion of this game. You want to know what Kyle Shanahan uh, and his offense was doing? The one that ran through everybody in the NFC? Such a juggernaut. This is why I keep telling y'all. What they did against the NFC don't mean a fucking thing to me. 
Because when you got to play against the real big dogs, when you got to play against the real killers, when you got to play against those real guys who understand how to play in a tough, uh, drawn out uh, slug fest of a game. That's when Kyle Shanahan started to show you what him and his team really about. And I told you, if you want me to believe in uh, Kyle and his team, go out there and beat the Chiefs. They couldn't do it. This is the worst version of the Chiefs you will find. Couldn't beat them. Now, I know some people say, well, none of the NFL could beat them. Everybody in the NFL wasn't held in the same regard as the uh, 49ers. Y'all held the 49ers in high regard against the Ravens. They got slapped. You held them in high regard against the Chiefs. They lost. Now, I just want to point out, Kyle Shanahan keep losing to the great quarterbacks, which I keep telling y'all. I'm not even just talking about the Super Bowl. He done lost to Lamar Jackson multiple times. He keep losing to Pat Mahomes. Matter of fact, let me just take, put it like this. He keep losing to Pat. He keep losing to Lamar. He keep losing to Burrow. Name the good quarterback that Kyle Shanahan has religiously had his number. I'll wait. To think that's not a problem with Kyle. This is why I keep telling y'all, I'm, I love Kyle Shanahan. Y'all, if you watch the show over the last, what, two years or so, you know how much I like Kyle. Man, I'm really starting to see the flaws in Kyle Shanahan's coaching approach. For one, Kyle, what, what, I'm, I'm really confused. I'm baffled damn near about that third quarter. You got C-Mac in the backfield and you will not hand the ball off to him. Now I'm seeing a lot of Raven fans bitching about the Ravens not running the ball in uh that last game against the Chiefs. The Ravens don't have a Christian fucking McCaffrey in the backfield, bro. So I'm tired of people saying that. Oh, they should have gave the ball to the running backs. Why? Why? What has Gus Edwards done outside the red zone on one yard run-ins that would make me want to keep giving him the fucking ball? Now, if Keaton Mitchell was in the backfield, you got me. Justice Hill, you might have me slightly because he had a great little end to the season. Bro, you don't have me begging to try to hand the ball off to Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, and I know I just said that about Justice Hill, but uh, still, that's not Christian fucking McCaffrey. Not giving the ball to Christian McCaffrey, the guy who clearly got you here, makes no sense to me. You can prove your point with Brock Purdy by winning a fucking Super Bowl with him. I don't understand that play calling by Kyle Shanahan. And he continued to hurt himself with bad play calling. And this 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 addiction to his own ego, you know, that's one of the things that keep killing him in these games. His addiction to his own ego. I, I don't get it. And I love Kyle Shanahan, man, but I just don't get how you can cost yourself three fucking rings. Because you done cost yourself three fucking rings, bro. Y'all could have took a huge lead on the Chiefs if you had it. And I understand how great the Chiefs defense done played. You didn't really make the Chiefs defense work based off of how. For one, if you become one dimensional against the Chiefs, you're not going to win. All right. It's plain and simple. You might have moments, but you're not going to win. On top of that, not only did you not score for large portions of this game because of how bad you decided to call the game plan. And you got uh, weapons over there. This ain't like the Chiefs who trying to figure shit out. You have weapons. You have your offensive system and all this stuff that you dot live and die by. And you diverted the game plan just to prove a point that Brock Purdy. Because I can't think of no other reason why you would have Brock Purdy drop back 30 to 40 fucking times a game when you got Christian McCaffrey. And like I said, this addiction to seeing Brock Purdy throw check downs and shit like that, they get taken for crazy amounts of yards. And then we sit, the, the announcers and the fans sit back and say, oh, look at Brock Purdy. That is crazy to me, bro. Crazy. The, the devil's work, if I must say, is what it is. Because I looked at this game, much like I look at every game. Brock Purdy didn't do shit in this game that was really special. He had a couple play, bad, a lot of bad throws, a lot. Of, it's, it'll happen, but it's nothing that I saw from Brock Purdy that said to me, "Oh man, he putting the team on his back." But you know who did try to put the team on their back eventually? Christian McCaffrey. When they started giving him the ball, it's so very clear that the best player on this offense is C Mac. 
So very clear. And I hate for C-Mac that he had the year that he had and he didn't win a Super Bowl because the running back position is a tough position and you don't know how healthy you'll be going down the line. And I'm happy that Christian McCaffrey done been healthy since he done been a 49er because he was never healthy as a Carolina Panther. But I I kind of think that's further proof that when you play for a team that's winning, you more likely to play through injuries and whatnot because I'm pretty sure C Mac and I hate what I'm finna say because then it'll make it seem like Christian McCaffrey quit on the Panthers when really, or it's going to make it sound like he was making business decisions when it's nothing wrong with that. Why would I try to rush back to play for a bad team, bro? And hurt myself worse. It makes no sense. The only way I'm rushing back or playing through ailments is if we are on a Super Bowl contending team. So, I hate this for C-Mac because I love C-Mac. Like, he probably my favorite player on the 49ers easily. Like, because I done fucked with C-Mac since he was in Carolina. Um, also, I do want to say something. Bro, I saw Warren Sapp talking to Cam Newton. Warren Sapp, I, I don't like Warren Sapp, the human being. Uh, phenomenal player. Terrible human being. Um, and to listen to how he talk about stuff. This is probably why I don't listen to old heads talk too much because they stuck in their ways. They always telling us what we don't know and what we won't listen to, but they don't listen to shit and they don't know everything. I know you done been around for a long time. You done seen a lot of things, but that don't mean you comprehended them the way you should have. To hear him try to go at Cam Newton all the time, he said that he called Cam Newton a running back because he was mad at something Cam said, meaning he just told you that he called you something out of emotions, like a female. Like a woman. So he acknowledged he's a bitch. Now I know some people say, oh, whoa, 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 say you calling people bitches. No, 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 no. He called himself a bitch when he admitted that he called Cam Newton a running back out of anger. If I go around calling motherfuckers bitches and saying, if I start degrading people's legacies because I'm mad at something they said, then I'm a bigger bitch. Then I'm just as big a bitch as uh, Warren Sapp admitted he was. But that's the thing that I don't understand. You you arguing up and down that Brock Purdy not a game manager. Cam Newton said that Tom Brady was a game manager. Hell, a lot of people think that Joe Burrow a game manager. I don't agree with that, but you pissed off that he called Brock Purdy, somebody who was so very clearly a game manager, and it ain't nothing wrong with being a game manager. Game managers get paid great money too. Look at Kirk Cousins. Look at Dak Prescott. I think Dak Prescott an elite game manager. It is what it is. I don't see Dak do shit that make me think he's special. He got a lot of talent around him more times than not. I don't see Dak have to put the team on his back and overcome a lack of something. See, that's the thing that I think a lot of people be forgetting. What did Brock Purdy have to overcome? What was missing on his? And I'm not telling you that you got to have missing pieces on the offense to be an elite quarterback. It's easier for me to see at that point but no it's not i told you pat mahomes had kelsey and uh tyreek and i knew that that was a phenomenal excuse me i knew that that was a phenomenal quarterback i didn't need him to lose travis kelsey i mean uh, tyreek hill to uh understand that oh speaking of travis kelsey he ran up on andy reed in this game boy he lucky he uh him because boy if i was andy reed boy i would have who I would have put them paws on you, boy. Don't walk up on me like that on the game uh, while we in the game on national TV, bro. I'll fuck you up for that. Hey, Andy, Andy, don't let him do that to you again, bro. Don't let. I like Travis Kelsey's old thick ass beard, real manly. Don't let him do that again. Don't don't let him do that again. Polish that boy up. Don't let him do that to you again, Andy. I got too much respect for you to be letting you to to sit here and watch another grown ass man who you got more authority than walk up on you like that. If that's Pat Mahomes, we got a whole nother situation. But Pat Mahomes wouldn't even do that. That's one of my problems. AJ Green tweeted, if this was me, we know what would have happened. They would have thrown me out the league. <clears throat> AJ, for one, can we let the game finish first before people start calling them out too? It's the Super Bowl, so it's not the same. They're going to judge you off this, a different playing field. Not me, however, because I agree, AJ. I would have called you out for it just like I'm calling his ass out for it. The only players who could have done that where I wouldn't have said nothing is probably Pat Mahomes, probably the quarterbacks. It's hard for me to get mad at quarterbacks for doing it because of the role they play. They see the field. They the ones actually on the field having to read the defense. You know what I'm saying? 
That's why I get irritated when a receiver doing it. Now, I understand if a receiver constantly beating his man and he legitimately is open, like Terrell Owens in Dallas. But just because you think you don't want your matchup all the time and you bitching left and right because you don't get the ball every drive like an A.J. Green, which I hope A.J. realized the difference in what just transpired. Travis Kelsey was mad he wasn't on the field because they fumbled the ball and he felt like he should have been on the field on that. You be bitching because you feel like you don't get the ball enough. Completely different. Neither uh, should have happened. I get that. But completely different. But like I said, Andy, don't let him do that again. I don't care who he dating. Don't, don't let him walk up on you like that, big dog. Do not let him walk up on you like that. Be- and tra- and uh, um, <clears throat> God damn it. What's my man's name? Uh, Patty. Bro, don't, don't, don't let Trav walk up on your coach like that, bro. Don't, don't let him walk up on Big Red like that, bro. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. But listen, what's some other shit that happened in the Super Bowl? We done talked about, uh, Kyle Shanahan and my confusion with how he called this game, uh, and his addiction to losing the great quarterbacks at this point or losing to Pat Mahomes in the Super Bowl specifically. Have it been a coach who done lost to the same player more than once in a Super Bowl? Like, because Kyle Shanahan done lost to Mahomes twice in a Super Bowl. I'm trying to, bro, what the hell? Boy, I just pulled a piece of hair out of my beard that's so goddamn long, bro. And I don't know if this is hair or if this was just a piece of string that was in my damn beard. Because my beard is not as long as this fucking string that I just pulled out, boy. Nope, that's definitely hair. The fuck was this hair doing? Just laying around? Anyways, just now I'm playing with my beard. Let's think of some more great things that happened tonight. We 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 got to get through the whole. We gotta we gotta dissect the entirety of the game. <clears throat> Chris Jones made some fucking plays in this game. Y'all remember when I told you that Chris Jones did not affect that Josh Allen throw for the touchdown? Josh Allen could have stepped up in the pocket or made another play, but because he's so used to being, to making, to not playing, uh, what, what do I want to call it? Uh, Because him, Lamar, and Pat do it. What the hell is the sentence that I'm looking for, bro? Technique. When they don't play within the technique, because they can do it so much. Oh, look at this. I just got an update that said Kelsey apologized to Reed. All right, you can apologize, but don't let that shit happen again, fuck boy. <laughs> don't let it happen again, fuck boy. But uh, shout out to Kelsey. Um, Hey, I know people was mad that they kept showing Taylor Swift tonight. I don't know how Ice Spice got into that Taylor Swift game because Ice Spice is a trash musician. Uh, and I don't find her attractive at all. And she hella overhyped. But this ain't an Ice Spice conversation. And the only thing she good at is shaking her ass, which is weird to me that people love her for just shaking her ass. Like, Taylor, why are you friends with Ice Spice, bro? I don't understand that at all. Like, what what, what drew you two together? Anyways, y'all know if you done heard the show before, I don't find Taylor Swift attractive. She could have got fucked tonight. I don't know what what her stylist did her up tonight. Taylor Taylor kind of looked like the uh the girl in class who get picked on all the time. Like it's like she she the girl who cute that the the cool dude he want to date her, but on the low like he ain't telling everybody he date her or not. The difference is Taylor Swift like one of the most popular people in the world, you know. So that's it. Kind of throw that out. I don't find her attractive, but she could have got fucked tonight. She was looking real fuckable tonight. All right. I just want to throw that out there. Let's get back to the game. Interesting game plan, like I said, from the Kansas, I mean, from uh, Kyle Shanahan uh, to cost himself yet another Super Bowl. Uh, You want to know what I don't really understand also? You put your faith in the arm of Brock Purdy. And I'm not putting this loss on Brock Purdy. Because Brock Purdy, I'm pretty sure, would have loved to turn around and hand the fucking ball off to his running back also. But Kyle Shanahan for some, you know, and I understand Brock can't do this because he got to have faith in himself. 
But I mean, at what point do you walk up to the coach and say, Coach, we got here off of C-Mac, bro. Run the fucking ball. Like, I understand what you're doing for me. But I want to win this game, bro. And do you see how the offense got back on track once they started running the ball? Oh, all of a sudden, now the slants is there. The crosses is there. The uh uh dink and dunk routes is there. Like, I don't understand costing your team. Bro, I think you can make an argument Kyle Shanahan cost all three of his teams in them three Super Bowls he lost. As the offensive coordinator for the Falcons and as the head coach for both 49ers teams. I think you can make an excuse that he lost all three of them teams. And you want to know what's real funny to me? Kyle Shanahan's failures is coming on the biggest stages because how trash ass the NFC is. And the only reason Kyle not going to get judged as a coach that can't get it done like these other coaches who we say can't get it done is because he more likely to get to a Super Bowl because the weak ass conference he play in. But if he played in the NFC, I'm telling you right now, I mean, in the AFC, Kyle Shanahan, I don't think would have been to a Super Bowl by now. Like if you take that 49ers team, swap them out with like who the fucking sorriest team in the AFC. Swap them out with one of them AFC South teams. I, I could care less. I, I'm almost willing to say they would have never gotten to a Super Bowl by now with the same talent that they got on their team. Or maybe they would have because he would have been tested on a regular basis against great teams. To me, I, listen, people are going to blame Brock Purdy. People are going to say this and that. Kyle Shanahan cost him that game because Kyle Shanahan not realizing, bro, we have not separated ourselves to not allow Pat Mahomes to be great. Anytime you let a game stay in the balance of a great player, they're going to figure out a way to take that game from you. To snatch uh, victory from the jaws of defeat. For some reason, Kyle Shanahan couldn't understand that and his moronic ass coached the game that he coached. I don't understand it. All offensive gurus get stuck in their ways at times. Very funny that Kyle, I mean, that the uh, Chiefs, Andy Reid has not. Now, maybe that's a product of having a great quarterback. Maybe that was a product of having a great offensive coordinator in Eric Bieniemy, who I'm almost certain will be back with the Chiefs next year. Uh, but whatever the case, mind you, if they get Eric Bieniemy, because I think it's very clear Matt Nagy is not a better OC than Eric Bieniemy. Like, that is very clear in my opinion. I think that you get a boost next year with bringing Eric Bieniemy back. And I'm be honest, I kind of think they need to bring B enemy back so he can transition into the head coach after uh, Andy Reid retired, bro, because Andy Reid not going to be around too much longer. I understand he would love to stick around as long as possible because he got Pat Mahomes, but I just think this is one of them times where Pat Mahomes came at the right time, even though it wasn't the perfect time. You would have loved for him to come back when you was in Philly or when you first got to uh, KC or when you was a younger man. But that's just not the case. So you're not going to get every Super Bowl you could possibly get while you with Pat Mahomes because you won't be here as long as Pat Mahomes will be here. Pat Mahomes will probably be winning Super Bowls after Andy Reid is his head coach, is no longer his head coach. That's just how great Pat Mahomes is. So I think Andy Reid should be transitioning Eric Bieniemy into being the head coach of the Chiefs one day. To me, that's the next natural move. Who done been with Pat Mahomes and done done more with Pat Mahomes than Andy Reid? Eric B. Enemy. <laughs> Mind you, I also want to point something else out. Pat Mahomes has never lost a playoff game in regulation. If he had lost this Super Bowl, it would have been in overtime, bro. This dude is fucking insane. This, this got to be the toughest player to ever have been played against in the NFL at this moment, bro. I understand people will say Tom Brady, but this motherfucker Pat Mahomes, I, I saw... Uh, Brady lose in regulation in the playoffs. I done seen Brady lose convincingly in the playoffs. I ain't never seen Pat. The only time I saw Pat Mahomes lose convincingly was when he lost the Super Bowl to Brady. And we know why he lost that game. Motherfucker didn't have an offensive line to speak of. But let's continue on with the game. You had the fourth quarter come around when the real action started happening. Both kickers hit some pretty deep kicks in this uh, Super Bowl. So shout out to the kickers. One of the things that really changed this game was once the 49ers scored again after the Chiefs scored, because the 49ers had a muff punt in this game that put the Chiefs basically in the red zone, and they immediately scored right after on a touchdown throw to Marquez Valdez-Scantley. 
the 49ers scored and then got the field goal blocked. That would have made it a four-point game. The game became a three-point game, meaning the Chiefs would have had to score a touchdown on that last drive instead of kicking the field goal to send it in overtime. You see how little things in the game fuck you at the end of the game? <clears throat> on top of that, the Chiefs missed a touchdown that could have won them the game in regulation. Instead of looking at the whole field, Pat Mahomes, rightfully so, he, he allowed to do this, got zoned in on one player. It's only a couple seconds left, so you're not trying to scan the whole field anyways. This is one of them times where you're trying to have a pre, you, you predetermining where you're going to throw this ball to most of the time. Because you don't, you know, you can't let this clock hit zero by trying to run through your options and be, you know, elong- extend the play. You couldn't do that. But uh, Rasheen Rice was open on a slant that probably would have scored. But nonetheless, the 49ers get the ball first in overtime. They go down the field with the help of bad. Listen, they called the an offense, I mean, a defensive holding on the Chiefs on a fourth down that got that kept the ball uh that kept the uh 49ers on the field and got them all the way down to the end zone where they uh kicked the field goal shout out to Chris Jones for uh forcing that field goal that play should not have even happened that should have been a play that offset because on the same play where the Chiefs was called for a defensive holding somehow the refs just allowed the uh 49ers to get away with a false start a clear false start at that also I don't understand what was happening in the NFL this year where they was letting offensive linemen get off before the uh, ball was actually hiked. Like I saw so many false starts this year that was never called for some reason. And then they had this part of the year where they started to want to call it when dudes was getting off of their block quick, uh, like when they was uh, getting out. Uh, when the offensive linemen dropped back to start uh, the uh, coverage early, the coverage, when they started blocking early, it was like a little stretch where they finally started to call that, especially on one of the dudes on the Chiefs. They did not call that on the uh, 49ers on that same play that a holding call was called on the defensive side of the ball. So I didn't like that. I thought that was the only reason that the 49ers even got the three points in overtime. Nonetheless, you should have just went for the touchdown in overtime. And the reason I say that is if you Kyle Shanahan, let's say you get this three points. I understand your thought process is, well, you know, if they get the three points and it's over, we we don't want to lose – by not getting these three points and then they get the three points, yada, yada, yada. But anytime you was in the red zone, that far into the red zone, in my opinion, man, go for the touchdown, bro. You went for the touchdown earlier in the game in a worse position. I don't understand why you're not still playing to win this game. Like, you know who about to come back on the field. You know Pat Mahomes ain't playing for no fucking field goal. And rightfully so. He marched them motherfuckers right down the field, making big play after big play, and won the game. Like the GOAT does. Like, I, listen, I think Kyle Shanahan had a rough night, man. A lot of people are going to make excuses. People are going to blame Brock Purdy. People are going to blame this, blame that. I think the 49ers lost this game because of Kyle Shanahan. To me, it was very simple. Uh, When you look at Pat Mahomes, and one of my biggest problems is if you're the offensive guru that you supposed to, that we say you are, how come you keep not coming through in key moments, bro? Bro, if you had to score a touchdown and three points to make it like a 14 or what 10 point game against the Chiefs, maybe you find a way to come out with the win. But the fact that you had a seven point lead for damn near two quarters and you did not score while having that lead is exactly why you end up losing this game. And you can't say, and I understand sometimes players have bad games. Uh, My boy, Pat Mahomes threw an interception, and the team immediately got the fucking ball back. Like your team ended up punting, bro. Or wait, did they get a field goal? They got a field goal. I don't remember what. I don't think they got points after that Pat Mahomes interception. So in my opinion, hell, the Chiefs fumbled the ball in the red zone. Like they fumbled the ball in the red zone uh, by Pacheco when they was trying to go for a score. It was so many things that happened in this game that could have, that, that the 49ers win this game if they take advantage of. 
And you keep telling me how great the offense that how great a play caller Kyle Shanahan. I didn't told you how great he could not come through. Used up all his magic in that Falcons game in the first half when you needed him to make plays again. Couldn't come through. The first 49ers game. You needed him to call up great play. Couldn't come through. You need him to couldn't come through in this game. So I know I like to put the onus on players. I call players out, yada, yada, yada. I don't really have no players to call out. I don't think Brock Purdy played a great game, but he played a game that I expect of Brock Purdy when the play calling ain't the greatest. Because I already told you, Brock Purdy is a game manager. How I'm going to be mad at him? He didn't go out there throwing picks left and right. He was just going by the game plan. (laughs) Who drew up the game plan? Kyle Shanahan. So, listen. If Kyle Shanahan can sleep at night, can continuously costing himself and his team Super Bowls, and you know, so be it. But in my opinion, if I'm one of his players, whoo-hoo, buddy, I am not fucking happy right now. But shout out to the Chiefs. The, I, Pat Mahomes just makes no sense, bro. That That's really what it comes down to. Pat Mahomes makes the plays that he have to make when he have to make them. If you thought that Pat Mahomes wasn't going to score on that last drive, you're kidding yourself. On both of those drives, the end regulation and the uh, win overtime. Now, the overtime rule kind of confused people. That was the only good thing Tony Romo did the entire night when he explained to people, this overtime is about to run out. Don't worry. The Chiefs is still going to have the ball. This is basically like overtime quarter number one. We will do another overtime quarter number two, basically. It don't just end because the Chiefs haven't scored yet. That's why the Chiefs wasn't rushing. Didn't need it because the Chiefs ended up scoring in that quarter, basically, anyways. And they'll walk off. I popped when uh, Pat threw because I was always going for Pat Mahomes. Always. I told you, bro. He one of my favorite players in the league. Plus, I love fucking greatness, bro. And if you don't love greatness, that's on you, man. I heard somebody say the other day, uh, winning is for losers. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's that's truly said by somebody that's done lost a lot. Cause my God, but where do you go from here if you're San Francisco? Well, I don't really know. The only way I can see San Francisco uh, cooping up a Super Bowl is, listen, the route to winning the Super Bowl for Kansas, not Kansas City, for the uh, Chiefs, uh, not the Chiefs, for the 49ers. In my opinion, a couple things got to not happen. You can't play Pat Mahomes in the Super Bowl. You can't play Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen in the Super Bowl because you're not going to win against quarterbacks that's so very clearly elite quarterbacks. And obviously, Kyle Shanahan, for some reason, don't know how to beat elite quarterbacks when it mattered the most or at all, really. If Kyle and these 49ers team want to win a Super Bowl, they need to take on somebody like, uh, fuck, uh, who an AFC team who I can see getting to the Super Bowl that ain't got a great quarter? Because by the time, if C.J. Stroud get there, C.J. Stroud going to have been a great quarterback, so I wouldn't take him again. To be honest with you, Kyle, you're running out of time because it's going to be time to pay some players in a couple of, You're not going to have this stacked team that you got right now. At some point in time, Brandon Ayuk is going to go get a contract from somebody else. Christian McCaffrey won't be the same Christian McCaffrey he is right now. Your offensive line will not look the way it's done look. Brock Purdy going to have a book out on him now. I don't know how long you can keep surviving off of this um, Kyle Shanahan play, uh, call great plays, and they just got a better roster than everybody in the NFC. I don't know how long you can last with that, especially knowing that Jordan Love is becoming an elite quarterback. So, in my opinion, as good as people thought the 49ers were, ultimately they looked exactly how I thought they would look. Uh, the 49ers defense, in my opinion, did play their best game against a great quarterback that I didn't seen them play this year. Like usually when they play against a good quarterback, they have like a good series or two. They had a great game plan. Again, Steve Wilkes was not why they lost this Super Bowl. I'll tell you that. He coached up a great defensive game plan for his team. However, I like to always point out the talent that the Chiefs don't have makes that uh makes defenses look far better than they probably are. And at the end of the day, it don't matter how good your defense play. To beat the Chiefs right now, it's an offensive mission. If you cannot put up a certain amount of points, you're going to always leave the door open for Pat Mahomes. I said it throughout the whole game. The Chiefs can't score, but neither can the 49ers. 
And that's not a bigger problem for the Chiefs. And they was down at the time. I said the pressure is on the 49ers because Mahomes in this offense, they're going to find the end zone. Come hell or high water, they will get into the end zone. I don't know if the Chiefs, I mean, if the 49ers going to end up back in the end zone. So if you don't figure out how to get this shit done quick, you're going to lose this game. And they ended up losing this game. Shocker. Listen, I truly enjoyed talking football with y'all this year, man. I truly did. This has been our best year on the channel, and it's not even close. Uh, We done got way more views, way more likes, way more comments, way more subscribers. It's been a phenomenal year. We on a hunt for 100 subscribers, <clears throat> for 100 subscribers. So tell a friend, share the channel. Uh, Hell, create multiple accounts and subscribe. I could care less, but help the channel grow. And I'm going to keep giving you great content and improving and getting better and up and uh, getting better mics, getting better setups, getting it's hard to say getting better information because, it's, I mean, you really can't get better information because I do my homework to a T. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm cheating you out with uh, my effort or nothing like that. Like if I was ever doing that, then whew, I don't belong here. But I, I wouldn't cheat you out with my effort and doing my homework and whatnot. When I say we get better, I'm talking about like the setup, the quality, the videos, things of that nature. The shit that I'm saying is coming out of my mouth. It's, it's well thought out most of the time. <laughs> but listen, I, I truly appreciate y'all. All year you've been rocking with me, man. We done gained new people along the way. I fuck with y'all heavy. To the ones who done been here from the beginning, from the ones who done been here for the longest, I appreciate you, man. Y'all done meant so much to me. Y'all done made this such a phenomenal year. I'm hoping that we have an even bigger year next year. The football content probably will slow down over the next couple weeks just to <clears throat> clear my mind and take a break from it. But as soon as the draft and free agency roll back around, we're going to be right back in it. We're going to be right back in it. So I, I, pre I truly, we're not ending the video. I'm just sending a big thank you out there for my best uh, football season so far on YouTube. I, I truly do appreciate it. I remember somebody had told me one day, they was like, bro, you don't got no views on your videos, bro. Why don't you just stop doing that and go try to do something else? Like, they was like, why you don't try to like post it on something else? Why are you trying to YouTube thing? And this, this was legitimately told to me. It's like, why you don't try to upload it on something else, bro? Cause clearly you're not growing on YouTube. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll grow. I'll get there one day. And so to see the support that's starting to come my way, to see the kind words that people send to me in the comment section, man, I truly appreciate it, man. It's been a great NFL season, man. Y'all is the biggest reason as to why I'm doing it, bro. Y'all y'all kept talking to me and commenting on the videos and saying what you wanted me to talk about and what you wanted to hear me speak on and my opinions on this, saying what you, uh, how you feel about it. That shit kept me going. That stuff right there, that was your, your comments and whatnot, they kept me going. You know how a lot of people pay attention to the negative things that happen, like the negative things said to them? I don't. I'm not one of the people who really uh sit there and marinate on negative shit that said to me. I, I always say this. I be seeing celebrities sometimes getting their feelings and be like, yeah, it don't really matter what I do because people going to hate anyways. And it, this celebrity will have way more people who send them love and they'll never address the people that love them They'll treat the people that love them like shit, but then give all the attention to the people who hate them. Yeah, I'm not like that. I pay far more attention to the people who show me love and who fuck with me. It's not that I'm. No, I'm very much ignoring the people who don't send me. Why would I want to fill my day in my mind with negativity? If somebody don't like the show or like what I say, OK, I'm not trying to convince you to change your mind to like me or nothing like that. I'm not even going to waste my time on that. I'm going to keep it going. And maybe you'll rock with me one day. Maybe you won't. But it's so many people that fuck with me. Why wouldn't I give them my attention instead of going back and forth with people who don't fuck with me? That's the thing I never understood. So I don't pay no attention to the people who uh, speak ill or don't like. I told y'all, bro, it was a dude who who tweeted me he's like not tweeted me. He said on he posted on a comment on a, one of my YouTube videos like a month or two months ago. He's like, bro, why do these shows keep popping up in my feed, bro? You suck, bro. LOL. I hate it when people say ignorant shit and they put LOL at the end of it. Like, bro, what? What? Why did you put LOL in this, bro? Like, you could have said what you said and stood on it by not putting LOL. Like, if I don't like you and I'm going to say something ignorant, 
Bro, I'm not putting LOL in there, bro. It don't turn into a joke just because you put LOL in there. Now, if it's a legitimate dig in there that you might have thought was funny, that's one thing. But just saying some negative shit and putting LOL in it makes no fucking sense, bro. Whatsoever. It's kind of condescending. And maybe that's the point. I don't know. I don't like it. But nonetheless, man, I appreciate y'all. But back to the motherfucking Super Bowl. So what do I expect going forward for the Chiefs? Now, listen, for most teams, you would say, well, you know, the Chiefs could be in trouble next year. They don't really got this. They don't got they still got motherfucking Pat Mahomes. So at the end of the day, when you still got Patty Mahomes, baby, hey, Pat Mahomes is going to make sure a lot of motherfuckers don't win Super Bowls. He also going to be a motherfucker. Bro, I saw somebody say, is it time to start mentioning him with Tom Brady? Bro, I already was mentioning with Tom Brady, and I think he better than Tom fucking Brady. Period. Like, in my opinion, I understand the greatness of Tom Brady, bro. I really do. But I ain't never seen a Pat Mahomes. I have never seen a Patrick Mahomes, bro. This motherfucker is different, bro. It's different. It's he he the he a player. You know how people used to say, man, when you play against Brady, bro, you can't make a mistake. No, bro. When you play against Pat Mahomes, when you play against Brady, the mistakes got to be held to a minimum. When you play against uh, Mahomes, bro, the mistakes work in a different way. They just work in a different way. Sometimes if the game was close, yeah, you knew Brady. And to me, Brady's greatest comeback I've ever seen him make was against the uh, – in that Super Bowl. It was a great time to have your greatest comeback. I think Pat Mahomes got an insane record when he losing by like nine points or more. He's still like undefeated in those games or something like that. That's crazy. Like, no, no, no. I think his loss is against the Patriots or Brady. That's crazy. Like, bruh, you know I'm not a stat head. Man, the stats work for Mahomes. The eye test work for Mahomes. The, 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 the other athletes speaking on him work for my, Like, bro, it's just not. Mahomes has no equal. He has no equal. To me, he is the GOAT of the game. People was talking trash about his dad bod. Man, you can walk around with a dad bod when you got three Super Bowl rings, bro. Point blank period, bro. He the greatest player of my generation. And I don't I don't even know what's my generation at this point because I grew up through the Tom Brady era. Like, I'm 29, bro. I done watched Tom, Peyton, Rodgers. Shit. Um, I feel like I'm entering a whole new generation now with Pat Mahomes. But the Pat Mahomes era is... Shit, the Pat Mahomes era feel more like the Jordan era when they were saying Jordan never let other people win while he was on the top. That's kind of what it feel like. Who the fuck else done beat Pat Mahomes? I think the only other dude who don't want a Super Bowl while Pat Mahomes been in the league is uh, Stafford with the Rams and Brady. I think every other Super Bowl done been won by Pat Mahomes in that time frame. Unless I'm forgetting somebody. Hold up. The last two Super Bowls was won by... Pat Mahomes and the boys. I think Brady won the one before that one. Yeah, I think Brady, Mahomes, and then, oh, fuck. Don't matter. It don't matter. It's irrelevant. At the end of the day, Pat Mahomes is him. Now, like I said, you're going to probably lose Chris Jones, which let that man go get paid. Like, if I'm the Chiefs, unless I'm offering him a huge contract, I'm going to Chris Jones and telling him straight up, we're probably not going to bring you back because we can't afford you. Go make a huge contract. We love you. It's no ill will between you and us. Come back and retire with us one day. We're going to have you in our ring of honor one day. We appreciate everything you done done for these three Super Bowls. When this Super Bowl team come back together in the future, you're going to be a part of all of this. Like, just Chris Jones should be a great chief at this moment. He should be one of your great chiefs in the history of the franchise. Uh, love him forever, but let that man go get paid. Like encourage that man to go get paid. And I'm not saying this because I'm like, Oh, I want the chiefs to be a weaker team, bro. They're going to replace Chris Jones. Bro. And as long as they got 15, who the fuck cares? Bro, listen to me. Every team that they played against in the playoffs, except for the dolphins, people thought was going to beat the Chiefs. 
I picked the Chiefs to win every game they played except for one, and that was when they played against my team. I don't understand what people are going to get it, but listen. And if I wasn't a Raven fan, I wouldn't have picked uh, the Ravens to beat uh, the Chiefs because I told you I love Lamar, and I think Lamar the second-best quarterback. I don't like betting against Pat Mahomes, bro. When you feel it, you feel it, bro. And when I watch Pat Mahomes, I feel it. I, I watch him and I say to myself, pause. I watch him and I say to myself, that's some motherfucker you cannot put money on against, bro. You can't do it. He will fuck you every time because of his greatness, bro. And that's what I'm seeing, bro. Listen, we'll probably do a two-parter on the Super Bowl because it'll probably be stuff that I forget to talk about tonight that I won't forget tomorrow when I'm thinking about the next show. <clears throat> But what an unbelievable uh, season, man. Shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs. Shout out to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Shout out to... Uh... <coughs> Shout out to the NFL. Shout out to y'all, man, for following me all year. I appreciate y'all for joining me, man. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them. We are at the end of the show. I know that kind of happened abruptly. <laughs> but I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them. I cannot tell you how much I fuck with y'all and love y'all for being with me all season, for showing me support, for sending me the kind words. The kind words mean so much to me, bro. Like, that's why I always uh, respond when y'all, like, y'all don't even understand, bro. Like, y'all be tweeting me, I mean, tweeting. Y'all be sending me nice stuff in the comment section and shit. Bro, I truly, like, that That shit be touching my heart, bro. Be touching my soul. I appreciate y'all for that, bro. You don't understand. And we in a society where you say nice shit to people and people just let it fly over their head. They care more about the negative shit said about them. Not me, bro. When people say nice shit to me, bro, I carry that with me, bro. Dead ass. So I appreciate y'all. I fuck with y'all. I love y'all. I can't wait to do this again next year. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them. To the 2023-24 season, Saint and the Sainties. What y'all want the nickname to be, man? I know we ain't got enough people to be having nicknames like that yet, but that was kind of corny. I called y'all the Sainties, man. That was That shit was corny. Saint and the crew. Saint and his big dogs. We signing off. For the last time of the NFL season. We fuck with y'all. We love y'all. Saint and the crew. Out. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money. So I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she take a shot. So I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in the tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking the sums. You would think shawty red track. The way that she running and running. She gone. You getting dumber and dumber, you out here chasing a bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> 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 <laughs>